Hello and welcome to Parkinson's Life, the monthly podcast offering a voice to the global Parkinson's community. I'm Laura Smith, editor of Parkinson's Life magazine, and each month we'll be bringing together two people with experience of Parkinson's to share their stories. Through lively, open and honest conversation, we'll be exploring life with the condition, discussing some of the challenges and sharing ideas on how to live well with Parkinson's. The Parkinson's Life podcast is sponsored by the European Parkinson's Disease Association, the leading voice for Parkinson's in Europe. For the latest research and information on how to live well with Parkinson's, visit epda.eu.com. This month, we bring together a health professional and one of her patients to discuss some of the tools they use when they work together. Josefa Domingos is a physiotherapist specialising in Parkinson's, based in Lisbon in Portugal. Edelta Oliveira also lives in Lisbon and was diagnosed with Parkinson's in 2015. She attends Josefa's clinic three times a week. As part of their conversation, they discuss a new assessment tool, the Parkinson's Disease Composite Scale, which has improved the way they communicate, helping them focus on what matters most during their appointments together. Hi, Idelta. How are you? Hi, Josefa. I'm okay, thank you. So, Idelta, I think we've been working together for about maybe three years. Is yes. that right? Yeah, mm-hmm. that's right. Idelta comes in about three to four times a week, uh, ongoing therapy. Uh, sometimes I have to push her away on holidays, so <laughs> <laughs> she must she must like it. <laughs> I like it. Oh, okay. I was waiting on you. <laughs> <laughs> I do everything with Josefa. I do box, I do dancing, Zumba. Uh, I I go to the pool with Josefa. I did, I do bounce. You know that bed that you... It's a trampoline therapy yeah, for balance. Yeah, yeah, that's right. But it's a big uh, thing. We go, that we go, and the public can go, but she goes with us as well. And it's very mm. good. And we, I enjoy it a lot. And she's good. Our main goal has been to keep the disease under control. Uh, so the focusing on keeping E-Delta physically active, but also in enhancing in, in goals that in the long term are important, like focusing on her balance, even though she doesn't have balance uh, difficulties and stuff. So it's, um, it's really about the core area is physical activity but interacting with the goal of keeping her well as long as we can. And, um, and so we, that's why we try different activities and we changing, uh, from one type of therapy through the other, but the goal is always the same, which is keeping her physically and cognitively engaged. Yeah, that's right. When I first start with Josefa, I have some symptoms. Uh, do you remember Joe, what I told you that I yeah, have you... Be- yes uh, I have the rigidity in my right side and um, I have problems uh, of sleeping because I got out, get out of the bed it was <laughs> quite scary but um, I was really I wasn't feeling I, I, I had I have Parkinson, but uh, yeah, you remember how I, you I was, went to the doctor, yes, and they say yeah. that you didn't even have Parkinson. Yes, I remember. Yeah. I remember that. Then he say, he make me some tests, and he said you have Parkinson. I went to the doctor to the neurologist because I was in the gym with a personal trainer, and. Uh, once he told me that uh, I didn't, when I was swimming, I didn't move my uh, right leg properly. And I said, what? I feel that I do it. Well, okay. But he said, you must go to the neurologist because this is keeping going on. And uh, I went for a neurologist. I didn't know which one, but he told me, that I, I had Parkinson, and he want me to do a dead scan, but I went to another one, uh, another neurologist, uh, to a second opinion, 
and again to a third opinion and they all told me that I had Parkinson's it, it was how I knew I was calm it, um, I didn't know anything about Parkinson anyway uh, so, yes, e Delta. So I think that's very common that people go to different doctors and neurologists. And um, I think I see that very often. And what I transmitted right away was you have to find someone that you trust and that you can work with for the rest of your disease. That doesn't mean that people shouldn't have second opinions, but uh, you have to come to a stage where you decide how many you want to go to before you take action, right? Um, and so I think it's it's really the long term care that brings on a challenge for our for health professionals. It's like how do we keep people in focused on um, on trusting us? And I th I think this is a place where the person must feel safe that you have someone that's managing the disease, either the neurologist or a health professional uh, that uses like um, in assessment tools and they are talking between each other, right? And I think that that brings us to the topic today, which is really talking about which type of tools would make sense in long-term care, how to manage your disease better. E-Delta, so did you feel that you had difficulty explaining your symptoms and stuff when you go to these consultations before um, we started working together? Before, yes. I didn't know that I, I could talk about some issues uh, like uh, anxiety, depression. I didn't know. It was you who told me to make a list and take it to the consultation with the neurologist. Yeah. At that time, I was already trying to form it, which would be the best way to assess someone that's with us continuously. So as a health professional, most health professionals will always say that they have time issues in doing assessments. Uh, luckily for me, I don't. So I could do all the tests in the world. But to be able to guide uh, you, I had to come down to having one one tool that will help me cover all the symptoms that you were going through so that you could use that in your consultations. And um, I think th this yeah. is where it was nice to hear about the Parkinson's disease composite scale because it really gave me an overview of all the symptoms that, and it opened up the conversation between us. So I wouldn't bomb you with so many assessments and spend s the whole week doing tests, but I can in, in half an hour or 10 minutes just get a grasp of what, what we need to focus on. Josefa, what does it mean, composite scale? So the, the composite scale is a tool that we use to measure the severity of 17 symptoms that can be experienced by people with Parkinson's. So it doesn't necessarily mean that you have them, but they have been reported. And so we go through them and just to check if there is any complaints on it. Uh, it, it combines four um, sections, you know, so it has like the motor symptoms and then the non-motor symptoms. You have the treatment-related complications and the disability. So it's like the motor symptoms are things like slowness of movement, also called bradykinesia, the tremor, the gait imbalance. And these are all assessed when I'm with you. So at that time that we are together, I am assessing that. And then the non-motor symptoms, which is like the fatigue, urine symptoms, yeah. cognitive impairment, or depression, anxiety is the real strong yeah. one here for you. Those um, and the treatment complications are all assessed based on your experience in the two weeks before. So we get your your insight and your experience of how you're feeling in, about those symptoms. Idata, remember how sometimes it's hard for to quantify or to say how you've been feeling in the last two weeks because the symptoms are so fluctuating? Yes, I do. Because sometimes I, I'm really okay and uh, sometimes it's, uh, some weeks it's different and it's quite difficult. But we always try to come to uh, what is mo mo yeah. most common, right? So it's uh, yes. the global picture of the two weeks. If it was only one week, that would be too short, but maybe two weeks is you have a, a reference of what happens most frequently. That's right. So we have the, the questionnaire printed out yeah. and I'm going through each item with you and okay. I'm quantifying it. As I ask you if you have any difficulties, I am scoring you if it's if the problem is absent, if it's mild, if it's moderate or severe. So when I go through all the symptoms, I can actually have a total score. And what we do is we, we do this assessment uh, like before you go to the medical doctor. 
Remember how I yes. give you uh, yeah. the report so that you can take to the doctor? Yes. Usually it's based on the scale. So if I identify that you are having urine difficulties, you're waking up during the night too, too often or something based on that, this will help me create uh, the sentences and what I write in the report in a very objective way, in language that the doctor will know better. So do you think that it helps you when you go to the doctor to take this report and to take this information? Of course it does. Because um, I, sometimes I I was thinking in th about fatigue. I never thought that uh, was from the Parkinson. You teach me. You taught me that. It's very important. You are very important and, to me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Now remember how as sometimes you. I think uh, we thought about this more because you were having difficulty remembering stuff when you went to the doctor. I was like, oh, I forgot to ask him about this yes, or that. Yes, that's right. And said, okay, let's just put it in writing so we reduce your anxiety on it. Um, yeah. Yes, uh, it it was because I forgot uh, because I haven't written in the paper and I have some symptoms and I thought. But uh, shall I talk with him or someone I forgot to, to, to ask the doctor? And Josefa helped me a lot with that. I am very happy to hear that it's useful. I mean, that's the only thing that makes sense if we are going to spend time organizing the consultation and then it actually is um, helpful to you and your husband to organize better, I would say, the, the, not only the managing the disease and the questions and the stuff that, that you want the doctor Uh, it's critical for him to get the right information so that he can act upon it. Sometimes I think people get overwhelmed in the consultations and yeah. you have the effect of, uh, you know, if he's wearing a white coat and that will affect you right away. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <You're>, right? Yes. <laughs> it's a typical thing in Portugal, right? Um, yes, it is. But, you know, it, as a health professional, we, uh, we have so many uh, assessment tools that we can use. And so by having the freedom of, choosing all of them if I wanted to. Sometimes I worry that we might be doing tests just for the sake of it, and I don't want that. So it's uh, it's good to hear that feedback, because if I have to choose something, I, it has to guide my clinical decisions. And I think the best thing about the scale is really about grasping onto uh, things that you might not know that it is to discuss with the neurologist, especially the anxiety yeah. and the depression, because you were also followed by the psychiatrist. And yes. so it's sometimes I, I felt that you like, should I tell the neurologist this or not? And of course, the it is a complex syndrome, so Parkinson, and, and of course, so that being able to understand that all these symptoms interplay and being able yeah. to transmit that to the doctor, I think is, is very important. Uh, you yeah. telling me that things, then I can discuss with the neurologist more easily yeah you remember yeah. like the fatigue which is something that why am i going to complain about this i i feel tired all the time yeah after eating yes. i feel really tired there's no relationship to me feeling sad or not i just feel tired and that can be adjusted with the medication so i f i feel very tired and sometimes i said i feel so tired like i've been working all day without stopping and she <laughs> told me this is Parkinson. It's about Parkinson, mm. and I I didn't know that I could discuss that with the neurologist in the consultation. Mm. It was very important to me. I truly believe that every uh, person with Parkinson should have a health professional. It doesn't really matter the profession itself. I think it should be the health professional that spends more time with the person because people are always fluctuating, and so to be able to identify problems early on. And so they will play the role of being the case manager, right? And I think even if it's not part of my profession, these type of scales, the composite scale that has an overview of all the problems, I don't have to know everything, but I, I should know about it and how to at least rate it so that I can use that common language to get to the other health professionals and to refer, uh, to be able to guide people in communicating their problems better when they have to go to another professional, namely the neurologist. Josefa, is what a, is the advantage of using the scale? I would say the main the one composite is, scale. Yeah, it does. So I think it would. I would say it improves, you know, communication uh, with you. Uh, for example, if we even if we're focusing on physical activity and keeping you physically well and cognitively well, sometimes you are very anxious, and I know that is there is a core pro problem for you. 
Uh, so it, it kind of, by identifying these problems, it, we are free to talk about them. So I think it gives us a bit of communication on mm. problems that you wouldn't think about discussing with me. Yeah. And so it's, uh, I think greatest advantages for the person with Parkinson is, would be that it helps us explore different problems and gives you space for that. It gives you time to discuss them that with me uh, yeah, during because therapy. Yeah, I believe uh, all people with Parkinson should be aware of such assessments and discuss mm -hmm. them with yeah, the health else? professionals, yes? Oh, yeah, for sure. I think it's any health professional that's working in this area is desperate to have solutions. And so I think this is a scale that people can use freely and can have easy access to it. It's easy to use. It's simple. The more you do it, the, the quicker you you go through it. Ah. Uh, so it's, it, it was useful, a useful tool to cover many symptoms and get the global picture How is it uh, impacting our in our lives, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And then, and then by that, it also helps me communicate better with the other health professionals so that we all understand what are we talking about when we're talking about fatigue, right? That's uh, right. How we're classifying it. I think that is a great advantage. And, but the biggest one also is being able to identify new problems that we might not be thinking of. So we're not only focused on gait transfers, balance. The other symptoms will definitely influence all these things that I'm working on, and I should be aware that they exist. I think that guides us in our care. E-Delta, I want to say thank you so much for participating in this additional adventure that I challenged you to, to help me out. I really want you to know that We are trying to help people get access to what you described. And I'm very grateful to be part of that and to help you always. So thank you so much for also being I'm so helpful. I'm the one who have to say thank you because you are very important in my life. Thank you for your support, for what you do for me. And this experience was very good for me as well <laughs> because keep me concentrated, uh, Uh, not uh, afraid of and <laughs> talking <laughs> yeah the tool discussed in this podcast is the Parkinson's disease composite scale a free assessment tool developed by the European Parkinson's disease association currently being rolled out across Europe the PDCS offers a comparatively quick and comprehensive way for healthcare professionals to assess patients motor symptoms non-motor symptoms and treatment complications, as well as their overall well-being. If you're a healthcare professional or person with Parkinson's who's interested in hearing more about the scale, please visit parkinsonscompositescale.com. The Parkinson's Life podcast is sponsored by the European Parkinson's Disease Association, the leading voice for Parkinson's in Europe. For the latest research and information on how to live well with Parkinson's, visit epda.eu.com. Thanks for listening to the Parkinson's Life podcast. If you like what you've heard, please rate and review us on iTunes and SoundCloud. It helps other people to find us. Look out for episode five, which will be released in the coming weeks. And until then, take care. Take care.